Welcome back to the third devlog everyone. Uh, there's been a lot of progress on the game since last time. Uh, so I think a week or two has passed since the last devlog. Anyway, I've been working on it on and off still um, now and then um, while working on uh, other things like uni and whatnot. That said, um, what I'm going to do for this video is I'm going to show you guys some time lapses in the start of the, for the first half. I'm just showing you guys the process and everything. I'll probably do a voiceover for all of that. And then at the end of the video, we're going to come back to here and I'm going to show you guys um, exactly all the new features. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and let's get on with it. So first off, I head straight into Shader Graph to create a nice little shader so that we can apply this to the materials of our models inside Unity. And what the shader does is basically it reads off the three different channels of UVs each model has, um, and then combines that with a texture that we specify and puts that into a certain channel or certain property of the fragment node, uh, which is quite cool because it means that parts of our model can be shiny while other parts are not shiny and they can have different colors and we don't need to use different materials for that. So this is what UV mapping looks like. Basically each face, you're just mapping it to a certain color value on a texture. Usually you'd have to be careful about this because you don't want the colors or the, the actual texture to stretch along the faces. However, for the purposes of this, since it's just using a solid color, it didn't really matter for me. So I just merged all of the vertices into a single color slot. <laughs> um, and this obviously was a long process having to do it on every single model. So it took me a few hours um, and there's still a few models which aren't done in the final product, but we'll talk about those later, I guess. <laughs> Next up to set up was the glider. So the glider, it was already modeled previously. I just have the actual cloth side of the glider as a separate model to the frame, um, which means that using the vertices of that separate model, I can then apply a cloth simulation to it in Unity, which makes it flop around as you can see, which is quite cool. Um, there's some external force here as well, pushing the glider's cloth up, making it look like it's actually um, got air inside it, like a hot air balloon, I guess. Um, with that done, straight to animating. So creating animations was quite simple. It was just something to bring up and then bring down the glider um, when we need to. And this is all controlled via the animator, which you can see me setting up here. And what the animator is, is basically it's a map for Unity to know which animations can tr transition and, and how they transition. Um, and the properties here are super important to set up. And that's how you also code them in. So you can see here the animal set bool. That's what it does. It basically obtains that property inside the animator and says, yo, you should be true now. That was basically it. So that's two days of progress in about three minutes for you guys. <laughs> As you guys can see, there's been a lot of work that's gone into the <laughs> game so far. Um, so I'm going to show you guys exactly everything that's new. So obviously we've got weapon switching. We now have a new backpack, which is quite fancy. Um, and that's basically the player's inventory. Um, we can also open that backpack. As you can see, so when we press E, he opens his inventory and he goes into this cute little animation. Uh, we can also press E to carry items. So as you can see, we can carry these blocks. Um, obviously, this one is a little bit messed up, but that's fine. Um, what the other things we can carry is actually stones and trees. I'm going to show you guys how this all works. So for example, 
if I start mining this rock, you'll see that the rock shakes. We go into this cool mining animation. If I turn away from the rock, um, we stop mining. If I turn back to it, we keep mining, uh, which is quite cool. And after a while, a little rock will pop out from this rock. There we go. And now we can go ahead and pick this rock up. So if I press E, I can carry it and I can take it back to my base. So as you can see, we go into the slower animation, into the slower walk, carrying animation, and then I can press E to drop it again. Um, same thing applies to trees. If I go to mine a tree, you'll see that the tree shakes when I hit it, which is quite cool. And then when it breaks, it will turn into a log. The other thing is as well, if I stop um, breaking and then go back to break it, it will actually retain its sort of previous health. So in a few hits, there we go. But that is a bit of an issue at the moment. So that's one bug that's happening where the log kind of just flies away. Um, however, that's okay. I can fix that later. We can also carry this log by pressing E and take it back to our base. So for those wondering what that actually is, the, like what's the point of that is because I kind of want this survival theme of this game to um, be a little bit more realistic than just, you know, stacking items in a grid like inventory. Um, Cause it doesn't make sense to break a tree and then receive cubes from it. So the goal is you break a tree, you receive this log, you take it back to your base and then near your base, you have to be a certain radius from your base. Um, you can craft it into other things. So for example, I can craft this into a door or like a wall or something. And uh, we'll get into those building aspects later on, but that's just basically the um, starting point. So as to how crafting and stuff is gonna work, I'm still not 100% sure, but that is gonna be basically the fundamental side of things. So uh, apart from that, we also now have a glider. So if I go up to here, I can press space, to jump obviously but if i press space while falling i'll go into this cool little glider there we go and the glider uses a cloth simulation for the i guess the canvas side which makes it look really cool so if i go and press space you'll see we glide down um another cool thing if i'm holding a tool and then i press and i go to glide it will first put the tool away and then start gliding right so there you go however if i'm not holding it well if i'm gliding and then i go to equip a tool so for example let's say i want to hold my sword while gliding i can do this well that didn't work hold up i was too late at pressing space i can press i can jump whip out my glider and then hold my sword uh, okay let me do it off the edge here so jump and then whip out my sword and as you can see we glide with one hand which is quite cool <laughs> uh, another thing i actually did real quick to mention i actually converted all the materials to um use uvs now instead so now everything actually has the same material um i wrote a custom shader for that um, so this is the palette so all our things in the game i use this palette and the UVs assigned to this. Uh, you would have seen me doing this in the time lapse anyway. So yeah, uh, this is the shader. It is quite simple. Basically, I have two, three textures, three textures. They go on different UV channels. So that's UV2, UV1, and UVO. Um, and they go to different aspects of the fragment shader. Um, well, fragment node. So yeah, um, that's basically it. It's not too complicated of a shader. But yeah, that's it for this devlog, guys. I hope you're enjoying the um, progress of the game so far. Uh, I think it's coming together quite nicely so far. <laughs> and the feedback on it has been absolutely awesome to see everyone's comments and um, how well the videos are doing and everything. So keep up the support. I'm going to keep on making this game for you guys. Um, seems like it's going to be a good one. <laughs> uh, that's it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care and peace.